Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to debrief on hands-on exercise 3-5 at the end of chapter three. And at this point in time, I need to tell you that this will be the last hands-on project debrief that I give you. And the reason why is, as you noticed in chapter three, for hands-on projects three, four, and five, you're just told what to do. You're not told how to do it. You're not given the code. So I don't want these YouTubes to get in your way of having to figure this out on your own. I really wanted to give you a strong foundation and the support and also explain the code, the statements. I think if you have somebody reading it and explaining it to you as you write it, it can be enormously helpful. But at some point in time, you're going to have to jump off the end of the deep end and write this code on your own. I do not feel it would be right for me to debrief on any more hands-on projects at the end of the chapters. I am still going to do my debriefs on the chapter exercises, though, because after all, you're given all the code there. So here we go. Last hands-on project debrief. In this case, we're doing the same type of work, only instead of using if statements, we're doing a switch statement, just to get you used to the fact that sometimes there is more than one way to solve a problem. And that is the case here. And so I'm going to put my five items in and just make sure that the code is triggering correctly. And it is, even though I'm using a switch statement instead of these if statements. So we've commented out the if statements. That's a fantastic way to isolate and troubleshoot. So let's look at this switch statement, switch I. And so you take the value of I and you run it against these cases. And there's only one case here that we care about that we want to do something different. And it's case five. Again, we started I at one. If I is case one, two, three, or four, and notice that we're incrementing I, regardless of whether we hit case five or we hit the default case, which is everything else. So we start I at one, we increment it by one, and once we hit number five, we're doing something a little bit different. All the other times when I is one, two, three, or four, we're taking the list item variable, we're setting it to item plus I, and then we are getting its inner HTML property of list item, which we again have identified as these five list items, and setting its inner HTML value to the value of the toolbox input element. Now, one thing that we've worked with a lot, but I think it pays to make sure that this is cemented in your mind, when we're working with a block element, like a paragraph or a list item or a heading tag, we're gonna work with its inner HTML property. But when we're working with an input box and we've typed something in this input box, we're working with its value property. So paragraphs don't have a value property. Only the input element where you type in a value has a value property. The list item to get the value property to become the list item text, we use the inner HTML property of the list item. This statement you're already familiar with, once we move the value of the toolbox, input box over into the list item, we clear the value of the toolbox, and we increment i by one. In both cases, when we use the switch statement, we end that case with a break statement, and the event listener is exactly the same. Okay, that has been fun to debrief on these hands-on exercises. I sincerely hope they've helped you learn JavaScript. I am all ears in terms of what other YouTubes I should make and appreciate your attention and your feedback. Thank you.